1.2, the way science works. What is the first step in scientific inquiry? Hint, it's not forming a hypothesis. Something has to happen before that. The first step is observing something in nature, and that's gonna cause you to ask a question. We use our five senses to make observations, like seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, or touching. The scientific method is not a set order of things. It's merely a pattern that we have a tendency to go through to solve a problem. First, we observe something, and then we form a question. We state the problem. Then we form this hypothesis. The if-then statement is what you've been taught up until now. And then we test the hypothesis by doing experiments or by collecting data. Then we observe the results. We could go back and reform a different hypothesis and retest and reobserve results, or we can just go ahead and draw conclusions. So the scientific method, these steps are not set in stone, they're very circular. When we test a hypothesis, we have to identify the parts of the experiment. One of those parts is called the manipulated variable, also known as the independent variable. This is the variable that causes a change, or I change. The controlled variable, also known as the dependent variable, is the one that is held constant. This is how that change is measured. So when you collect that data, this measurement will be something in a measurable unit, like grams or liters or meters. A control is a part of an experiment that you do not change. You leave it alone so that you have something that is not being changed. So you can't say, well, it might have been because of this or it could have been because of that. So the control is a controlled test subject that doesn't experience the variables. Constants are those things that remain the same throughout the test. They never change. And the NRT is the number of repeated trials. The more the better because a larger number of trials improves the accuracy of your results. So the types of variables, if we were looking at different types of liquid and their effect on plant growth, the independent variable is the one thing you change, and we limit it to one per experiment. The dependent variable is the change that happens because of the independent variable. And then the controls are everything that you want to remain the same. How do we collect data? By making observations. We can make direct or indirect observations. A direct observation is when you make an observation using your senses. An indirect observation is when you make an observation with the use of an instrument to improve your senses, like a microscope or a telescope. The different types of data that we can collect are qualitative and quantitative. If it's a qualitative data, that means that it has the quality of. It's very subjective meaning your feelings, your perceptions, and it depends on the subject. For example, yeses, noes, the color change, smells, sounds, did you like this, yes or no. A quantitative data is a measurable quantity. For example, grams, milliliters, centimeters, volume. This is an objective measurement. It's observable and measurable, and it remains the same throughout for everyone. So how do we collect that data? We like to put it into a table. I'll give you a hint. The independent and dependent variables are always in the same places in our data tables. The independent variable should always go in the left-hand column. The dependent variable, those measurements that you take, should always go in the right-hand columns. If you have multiple dependent variables, you would just add another column over here. We're gonna talk more on graphs in section three of this chapter, but we like to use graphs because when we present with a graph, it makes it easier to see trends. The different types of graphs, hopefully you remember these, but a circle graph, we use those a lot when we're talking about parts of a whole. A bar graph compares different things. A line graph shows change over time. And a scatter plot is a more advanced type of graph that we'll get into later. When we're graphing things with our independent and dependent variable in a line graph, we have the D right here and the I will go right here. 
So the scientific method continued. Once we collect that data and we put it into our graphs, we can draw a conclusion. We try to explain the data. We determine if the hypothesis needs to be revised. Should we change it? Do we like where it's at? And then we can develop a theory. A theory is a tested explanation. It'll never be proved, but it can become stronger with further investigation. So going back to our question, why isn't astrology a field of science? Why isn't the supernatural science? They use scientific instruments. We've all seen the shows. We study space, so why aren't aliens a part of science? The answer to that lies in the fact that even though we might use scientific instruments, those tests cannot be replicated. Just because they look scientific, they might not be actually showing us what we think they're showing. So these fields can't be replicated. They're not reliable data pieces. Measuring with metrics. The map shows in red the countries that don't use the metric system. Notice we are one of the very few that don't use metrics. We're going to get a handout in class and it's going to live in your binder, but it's going to summarize all these physical units, these quantities and base units and the symbols, because we'll deal with all of these this year. The metric prefixes, some of you may have learned the step method. We don't do that anymore. We're going to learn how to convert between different measurements because that's going to help us with our dimensional analysis later on. Length is a measured distance in a straight line. Our common metric prefixes would be meters and centimeters. Area is calculated by length times width, and that's just the amount of surface in a certain area. So if you were looking at carpeting in a room, you would do an area calculation. Volume is the amount of space that an object takes up. We calculate it with length times width times height, or length times width times depth. And you'll notice the measurement is a cube because we use three different measurements. To find the volume of an irregular shaped object, we use the water displacement method. We take a given amount of liquid, preferably water, and we're going to drop our oddly shaped object that we can't do length times width times height. And we're going to measure the displacement. So in this case, it rises two units. So the object has a volume of two milliliters, which is equal to two cubic centimeters. Liquids measure volume with graduated cylinders. That's these. We do our mixing in beakers. We observe things in beakers, but we don't measure in them. Weight changes, but mass does not. Your mass does not change, but your weight can if you travel to space. When we talk about dimensional analysis, we're talking about converting between two things. We're not just moving the decimal because as we get going this year, you're not going to be able to do that when you're moving between different units, triangle to triangle, circle to circle. They're not the same thing. So we have to learn how to convert the correct 